Here's a strip over here. If your cord would go that far down, you can put it in the middle here. It's for Tim. Are we ready? I'm going to call the Sheboygan Common Council Committee of the whole meeting for Monday, July 23rd to order. Uh, Alderman Carlson, would you please call the roll? Ballinger? Here. Boris? Here. 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 Absent. Here. Here. Excused. Here. Absent. Here. Here. Quorum is present. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next thing on the agenda, item number four, is approval of the minutes from the May 2nd, 2012 meeting. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Next thing on the agenda, number five, is a public forum on agenda items. Uh, those wishing to speak uh, will have uh, three minutes per person. Uh, who would wish to speak tonight? Uh, Mr. Hansen, you're first. For the record, Mr. Hansen, would you give your full name and address, please? Terry Hansen, 508 New York Avenue, Sheboygan. What's that? 508 New York Avenue. You will have three minutes. All right. Thank you, Chairman Boren and City Council members. Um, I'm here to talk about the combined dispatch um, that you'll be discussing in closed session today and the county's proposal. Um, as you know, the City County Shared Services Committee has reviewed this, and just recently, the, you, the Common Council, and the County Board have both supported resolutions endorsing the concept of combined dispatch center. After that was supported by both entities, both city and county officials, we had Mayor Van Akron involved, Alderman Hammond, um, and then City Administrator Jim Mamodio, Chief Domagowski, Chief Herman, and Dave Augustine involved with some um, county staff in discussions on some preliminary steps on what to do. After we went through some of those early schematics, um, County Administrator Adam Payne challenged the county staff to come up with a proposal that would be a win-win for both the city and the county. And the proposal that I believe you have um, dated June 7th um, shows what we think is a win-win proposal. Under this proposal, the county would run the combined dispatch operations out of the law enforcement center and fund the full operations out of its tax levy. Um, in order to do that, we're looking for the city to help with that uh, construction of that facility and then also to look at um, chipping in for the upcoming radio system upgrade that the city and the county utilizes for emergency services right now. Um, we're looking at this as a win-win because under this proposal for the first 10 years, city of Sheboygan taxpayers would be saving about $150,000 a year. Um, so that first 10 years we'd be looking, while that debt service is funded, that the total savings would be $1.5 million. Then after that 10 year period, the city of Sheboygan taxpayers would be saving $800,000 a year. So it definitely is fiscally beneficial for the city of Sheboygan taxpayers. And on the converse side, BB will be speaking as to some of the benefits that the county will be seeing. But on page two, just to give a little background on the document, is how we came up with those numbers. You can see what the city of Sheboygan taxpayers are paying right now for um, combined dispatch and what the proposal would be. And page three shows the impact for an average homeowner if their home is valued at $150,000. Um, essentially, the city average homeowner with a $150,000 home would be saving about $10 a year for the first 10 years and it would be saving nearly $50 a year for the every year after that. 
um, and that's not including inflationary savings that would be included. And the county taxpayers would be paying an, addition, an additional amount of $20 for the combined dispatch. But for the first time, both the city and the county taxpayers would be paying the exact same dollar amount for combined dispatch services. So for exactly the same level of service, they're paying the same amount, which would equate to about $3.13 per month or 37.50. Time is up. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Next, Mr. Brookbauer. Uh, Director Brookbauer, if you could just give us your full name and address for the record, please. William Brookbauer, 525 North 6th Street. You will have three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council. I'm just going to briefly touch on what I would consider the highlights, not by any means the entire advantage of going to a combined dispatch. Probably the number one advantage that we have is you'll have a single answering point for everybody calling in for an emergency service within the county. Currently, all 911 calls do come into the county, but anything occurring into the city requires us to transfer those calls to the city dispatch, which does delay dispatch of services for those calls, the amount of time it takes to relay that call. Second, you're gonna have a standardized operation of all protocols and training for everybody in the comm center. You'll standardize your levels of service, whether you live in Glenbula or you live in the city of Sheboygan. All dispatchers will be trained the same, protocols will be the same, services should be standardized out. Second, uh, we have, speak for the county, I know that I believe the city is also short at the current time of dispatchers within their center. Having a larger work group will allow us to be able to absorb fluctuations in staff a little bit better once we reach full staff. Uh, versus having smaller work groups, if one or two dispatchers go out for whatever reason, family medical leave, get a new job, or whatever, it, it is a higher, harder hit for that work group to absorb and causes uh, overtime. And it can eventually, if it goes on long enough, like in our case, it's well over two years, it starts to get very stressful for that work group. We will be able to handle large scale incidents much better just with the regular enlarged comm center, not even talking about a backup center. We'll have more staff on call that can handle a direct impact. And usually, if you have a situation where it might be busy in the city for some reason, but it's not busy in the county, I would have four dispatchers. I could regulate three to deal with the city and have one still handle the county while I brought more help in if needed. We don't have that availability in either house right now. The most we're going to probably have on duty at any one time is two, vast majority of the time, maybe three. Second, we have the ability to have Right now we only have, in our center, have three full-time councils. The city has four. We'd be able to go to six in a new council. We'll have more equipment to put our bodies at once we get them there. Lastly, we will have a true backup center, which would be the city police department's dispatch center, which we do not have any longer right now. We do not currently have that. We back each other up, but for a long-term situation, if it was something where a comm center was down for a lengthy amount of time, neither one has the facility capable to handle dispatching for both departments long term. Uh, we'd also go from having three dispatch centers, basically the city, county, and our emergency dispatch center at the 25th Street Fire Station, down to just two. Ours in the backup center, which should also then become your EOC backup center. Uh, those are the highlights. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else want to be heard? Supervisor Fighter. For the record, uh, Supervisor Fighter, your full name and address, please. Yes, my name is Peggy Fighter. My address is N6670 Rangeline Road, Sheboygan, with the 83 zip code. Uh, thank you, Mr. You'll Chairman. You'll have three minutes, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to, to speak tonight and to the council members and members of the audience. I, too, am here to address the issue of combined dispatch, which is nothing new in Sheboygan County. We've been talking about this for years. Um, there is a new proposal in front of everybody, and I would respectfully ask that the council consider it with the most sincerity. Um, we have an obligation not only to the city, but to the county, and most importantly, to the taxpayers and citizens of both Sheboygan County and the city of Sheboygan to consider this deeply. Um, I couldn't help thinking 
Over the past couple of days, the um, episode that happened in Aurora, Colorado, and how that would have played out here in Sheboygan County had that happened at the Marcus Cinema in our city. What would have happened is what all 911 calls for emergency would have been come in to the Sheboygan County Dispatch Center, which would in turn would have had to redirect all of those calls to the city dispatch for emergency services because um, that's the way our system works. And how many lives could have been lost um, during the delay of response and the frustration on uh, emergency personnel and so forth. So um, I think the case is closed on it and we need to move forward and I thank the council for um, its consideration and I'm happy to be part of any further discussions on this. Um, I am also chair of the Shared Services Committee which met on July 10th and thanks to Alderman Ressler, I was elected chairperson of the committee. So I'm happy to do that and happy to talk to anybody else on this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to be heard? Anybody else wish to be heard? Anybody else wish to be heard? Uh, thank you to the uh, people who spoke tonight at the public forum. Uh, next on the agenda is item number six, chairman's comments. I don't have any at this time. Uh, next on the agenda, we have items for discussion only, and that's item number seven, council document number 3.6 from July 2nd, 2012, RO number 76-12-13 by the city <coughs> clerk, submitting a communication from Alderman Bourne along with an issue of capital buzz regarding the contribution rate for the 2013 for the Wisconsin Retirement System. And uh, our Chief Administrative Officer, uh, Jim Amodio, will be leading that discussion. I'd like to come up. Uh, while, while Mr. Amodio is coming up here, I think for the benefit of the people at home, this is rather short, so I think I'll read it. Uh, this came out of the League of Municipalities Capital Buzz on June 22nd. Uh, WRS employer and employee combined contribution rate likely to be between 13.2 and 13.7 percent for 2013. An article in today's Washington State Journal reports that the combined employer-employee Wisconsin retirement system contribution rate for 2013 will likely be between 13.2 and 13.7 percent of payroll. That would be a big jump from this year's 11.8 percent contribution rate. Wisconsin employee trust fund staff confirmed for me today that the article was accurate. ETF will be sending employers an update in a week or two. ETF staff said the contribution rates are usually approved in June. This year, however, the rates will not be finalized until September due to delays caused by changes made to the retirement system by Act 10 and the biennial budget. The 2013 contribution will be split by government employers by government employers and employees. Most of the increase is the result of the system's continuing recovery from investment losses in 2008, a uh, world financial market crash. But an unintended consequence of Act 10 is expected to boost the employer-employee contribution rate to about 13.2% and possibly as high as 13.7% of payroll the highest since at least the mid-1980s. Without the Act 10 effect, the rate would have been about 12.5% according to the ETF. <coughs> Jim, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, what I passed out in front of you is from the ETF, and this is dated uh, June 29, 2012. Some of the key things here is one is Jim's covered already. Uh, normally we have these rates at the end of June. It looks like somewhere towards the end of September, we'll be seeing the real rates uh, that affect uh, the entire state. Uh, the, key, the key in this is that uh, the tables that are presented on the next page uh, actually leave out the sick leave rates, which doesn't affect the city because that's really a, a state rate, but it doesn't include the disability rates or the underfunded pension liability rates. 
uh, which it normally does. So when you flip to page two, you can see that the current rate we have in the general category for this year is 11.8%. Next year, you can see the estimates 12.8 to 13.7. And again, there's no adjustment in there for the underfunded pension liability. There normally isn't any um, disability payments uh, or percentage that gets tacked onto the general court category. That's more in the protective uh, with and without Social Security. Um, when you look at the protective uh, with or with, with Social Security, the rates of 15.6 to 16.5, again, have to be adjusted by at least 2.4% because that's what we paid this past year uh, for disability and also could be increased for any underfunded uh, pension obligation. Protectives without Social Security, again, 17.9 to 19.3. That would be closer to 20.3% or 21.7, just adjusting that for uh, disability. The rates that we use in our budget this year use the low side and the high side of both of these sets of numbers. And those were just the 13.2 to the 13.7% numbers. Again, not making any provisions for any increase in disability or unfunded pension liability above what was uh, seen in 2012. And that impact came out to be between $180,000 on the low side and $240,000 on the high side. So we've used an average uh, in this year's budget that we'll be presenting uh, of about $210,000 as an added cost to cover WRS contributions for 2013 based on these requirements. Any questions? I have one, Jim. Uh, the $210,000, is that part of the, uh, I believe we had a budget shortfall in the budget that I was looking at of what, 869000 whatever it was. Is this 210000 is that an additional 210000 on top of that, which would bring it up to almost a million bucks? Or would well, be a million dollars? The budget that was presented was a balanced budget. Um, what this does is it increases the cost to that budget by roughly 210,000. The offset to that is really TID 3 closing mm -hmm. in 13, which would be an offset of close to 200. Uh, Alderman Heideman and I had some firsthand experience with this uh, stock market crash back in 2008. Uh, over at, uh, near South High School, right southeast of South High School, right off of Washington Avenue, I believe it's Cherry Lane. Uh, we were going to have capital, uh, we were going to uh, put that in our capital improvements budget. I believe it was for 2008. And Alderman Heideman, myself, and Mayor Perez at the time met with the neighbors over there. And those people were on the waiting list for that project for almost 10 years. And we finally thought it was going to be done. Well, because of the fact that we had to cut back on our capital improvements budget for 2008. I believe we were going to bond, if my memory serves me correctly, about $4 million, and I think we cut back to $2 million, and the cost of that project over on our district was $2 million. So we always hear our constituents say, well, why don't you spend the money on repairing the roads, putting in mini sewers, whatever the case may be? Well, this hit that we had to take as a result of having to repay this money into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund, and our, just our district alone, that project is still not done, and I don't know if it'll be done in the, in the foreseeable future. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Amodio, but I believe the total impact on that market crash back in 2008, I believe the total financial hit to the city was about $4 million, am I correct? And it had to be paid back over a period of five or six years? Do you recall? I don't. All I know is that in 2008, there was an unfunded pension liability for the city and uh, it borrowed $4.7 million from the Motor Vehicle Fund and about $3.3 .3 million in other bonding to pay the fund current, as I recall, Jim. And then uh, if I recall, uh, the financial hit on the city of Milwaukee, which has many, many more employees than the city of Sheboygan, but I believe that budget hit that w uh, on the city of Milwaukee was about 40 or $41 million that they had to pay to make whole the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. So 
yeah, it's a lot of money for the city of Sheboygan, but also uh, a huge hit for cities like Milwaukee who have their budget problems like everybody else and how they're going to come up with that $41 million. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think one of the things to keep in mind when we're talking about um, how this works, for those that aren't familiar with WRF, I've got plenty of clients that are impacted by it. This is a five-year smoothing. So what happened in 2008's market really didn't have anything to do with the money that we pulled out of those particular funds to fund the unpension, unfunded pension liability. That was from things that happened down in Madison, raiding from funds and doing those types of things or not putting enough away in early years. So when we look at this, you know, for example, uh, you know, we're, we're still paying for the sins of 2000, I shouldn't say sins, but the market of 2008. They use a five-year smoothing so that they don't have the huge um, swings that you would see if they were trying to keep this funded year after year after year after year. So, you know, note that, um, you know, next year in 2013, we're still within that five-year window um, of that smoothing. Now, obviously, 2009 was fairly decent, 2010 and 2011 not so good. But, again, it's a five-year smoothing, so we may not have seen the end of this one yet. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any other questions for Mr. Modio? Thanks, Jim. I'll entertain a motion on this document. Can't. It's for discussion only. Oh, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Next, we have under items for discussion and possible recommendation of the Common Council, we have number agenda item number eight, Council document number 3.3 .3 from July 2nd, 2012 and RO number 73-12-13 by the city clerk, submitting a communication from Alderman Bellinger regarding the reduction of the Sheboygan Common Council from 16 members to eight members. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's, it's my opinion that the makeup, the size of the current council is unnecessarily large. And as a governing body, we are, uh, especially during this time period, going through the budgets, we're asking department heads and um, all the city's employees to do more with less. And I think it's important that we look at ourselves as a governing body and see um, are we doing things in the most efficient and economical manner. And um, it is my opinion um, that we could be doing things um, in a more efficient manner. And uh, that's why I would like to make the recommendation that we go from 16 Aldermen, council members, down to eight, cutting it in half, um, keeping the same um, eight districts and not screwing around with the maps or any of that, and uh, just having one uh, representative from each district. And how I would go about achieving this would be uh, in the 2013 aldermanic election, uh, the eight aldermen that would be up, or the eight districts that would be up for um, election, I would have that change from a two-year term to a one-year term. Then in the 2014 aldermanic elections, uh, all 16 aldermen would be up for re-election. And um, going forward, at that point in time, each, each district would elect a single representative. So that's how you'd get from 16 to 8. And I would propose that the odd number of districts would elect their aldermen or alderwoman to a one-year term, and the even number of districts would elect their alderman or alderwoman to a two-year term. This is necessary uh, to achieve the um, half of the um, council coming up for election every year. So I would just have it fall on odd and even years, depending upon what district you're in. That's when that would come up for re-election. Uh, then 2015, then that's when everything would just kind of settle down and um, everything would go on uh, from, from that point on. And um, doing this would yield a, a savings, although not uh, anything real significant, but it would be approximately $35,000 in savings um, from uh, the reducing the council by that many. So this would require a charter ordinance, would be a two-thirds vote. Um, I have discussed this with um, Attorney McLean, um, uh, the, the clerk, Sue, and uh, they don't see any problems doing this. Um, I've mentioned the committee structure, and uh, they said that uh, there, there would be some issues uh, with that, with um, they're possibly having more people on attending more committees. 
Um, I asked in an email to Attorney McLean if it would be uh, possible to reduce the number of standing committees, and he said, sure, that would, again, I believe it would take a charter ordinance to do that. No, it would not, but, uh, but we could do that. Um, but I would like to see um, this voted on or go before the Common Council and just on the merits of, do you believe that we can do things more efficiently and more effectively with less people, um, I think we can represent our constituents equally as well with a single representative from the district. I also did some research. Um, I looked at comparable size municipalities in Wisconsin. I looked at Eau Claire, Janesville, West Dallas, La Crosse, Wauwatosa, Fond du Lac, and Manitowoc. Um, out of all of those, um, and I picked those because they've got uh, relatively close um, population as, as we do. Eau Claire has 11 councilmen, Janesville 7, West Dallas 10, La Crosse has more than we do, they have 17, Wauwatosa has what we have, 16, Fond du Lac has 7, and Manitowoc has 10. Um, I also talked to the president of the Fond du Lac Common Council and the Janesville Common Council just to see how those numbers worked out for their um, group, and uh, they were frankly surprised at how large our group, or how large our council was. And um, they're very pleased with how, theirs, how their system works. So um, with that, I'll just open it up for discussion. Alderman Wangaman, you're first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before, the, before the meeting, uh, Alderman Bellinger and I were speaking. And I had done some research on this in the past. And there's a reason why we have 16 aldermen. Because if you go back in Sheboygan's history quite a ways, you're going to find out that the aldermen had an awful lot more work to do than we do now. In fact, they handled the budgets. Each alderman had to handle the budget for his district. He had a police and fire budget. He had a sewer budget. He had a school budget. The council in those days handled the school system budget. And they had all these budgets to work with. And so they had a much more uh, active uh, input into government and a lot more responsibility probably than we do now. And it really took, an, it took 16 people or at least one person for each district or, or ward to uh, handle all this work. And so things were a lot different then. What we're looking at now is we have a somewhat archaic system on our hands. And I, I agree with uh, <coughs> Alderman Dellinger that uh, this needs to be looked at. In fact, I came across a city in Illinois that did this. And it was a city about the size of Sheboygan and the, the name escapes me right now, but they cut their aldermanic uh, members on the call in half and what they did was they abolished all the committees and they had every document go through the the uh, committee of the whole and that's how they handle all their stuff and that way they felt that each alderman would share in all the workload not that one alderman has to go to six committees the other guy only maybe two or three which in some cases we have now but they felt this was a much more equitable system and for them it works out very well so it, I think this really bears some uh, looking into. And as the uh, Alderman Ballinger said, it's not a necessarily a huge uh, money saving thing, but I think what we're looking at is streamlining it and becoming much more efficient. But I thought a little past history on this was uh, valuable. And why do we have 16 aldermen? It's just like out in the county, you have uh, town governments, you have county government, you have uh, town constables, you have the sheriff. But that's because people, it, it took so much time to travel. If you needed a, the sheriff's department and you didn't have a phone and you lived in Random Lake, heaven knows you might have to go five, 10 miles before you found a phone, but that doesn't exist anymore. And so there could probably be some trimming done there too, but that's beside the point. But for the city government, it was the same thing. In fact, the aldermen years ago also had full arrest powers and they carried a badge. So if your neighbor kids threw a rock through your window, you didn't call the police department, you called your alderman and he went over there and if he felt that arrest was necessary, he did that too. And if you go back even a little farther, the alderman had to light the street lights at night they, in her district and they had to put them out in the morning. So alderman had a lot of, lot of more work to do and it's kind of interesting when you look back and you, it isn't hard to see why we needed 16 aldermen, but the question I guess here is do we need 16 aldermen anymore? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Alderman Wangaman. Uh, Alder, Alder Person Donahue. I got my badge yet. You won't either. Well, I was going to speak in, in favor of uh, Alderman Bellinger's uh, proposal 
now I really am, <laughs> based on, on uh, Bill's information. Um, and I, my cut on it is just a little bit different. Um, because we have this odd thing of two older people representing one district, um, our constituents are put in um, potentially a bit of an odd spot. If Alderman Matichek and I have a disagreeing vote, or we vote in disagreement um, on a particular issue, that essentially means that our constituents have not been able to have representation come forward on a particular issue. In other words, District 4, well, one was for and one was against, so District 4 is not really, were heard, but not really able to make an impact. How about constituents who don't know? First of all, I would suggest that a fair number of our constituents don't even know that they have two older people. Um, but how do they know which one to contact? Sometimes they contact both. Sometimes those older people take different routes trying to resolve problems, and there's a duplication of efforts. So it's not particularly efficient for our constituents as well. Um, I think there are, uh, obviously, efficiencies uh, to be looked at. Uh, the cost savings are, are pretty minor. But um, I do think it would be, frankly, if, if we just mirrored it in, in terms of Wisconsin government, if we had um, two people in uh, Assembly District 26, if we had two Assembly people in, in, in District 27, how about st State Senator Joe Libum? You know, maybe he and I could share that, or both be from, from that district. <clears throat> There's a reason that we just have singular representatives in all of these um, voting districts, and I think for these reasons, um, getting to the point does require some, you know, step-by-step, year-by-year kinds of uh, changes, but I think ultimately it really is better for the, for the Common Council as a more efficient body and also uh, for our constituents as a whole. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any comments? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I agree, I echo a lot of the comments that uh, Alderman Donahue made and uh, Bill, that was quite an insightful uh, history lesson there, wow. I don't think they want me climbing up light and lights. That would be a bad <laughs> idea. But uh, I do believe it, it warrants some reviewing. Um, I did have an opportunity to talk to uh, Alderman Bellinger about this, um, you know, whether it's eight or 10 to match the citywide county supervisory seats. I don't know if that's easier from a polling place standpoint because you have 10, you have 10, you know, polling place. I don't know, that's probably a Sue Richards question. But I think it, all, it might also bring up a larger question and just to kind of a review how we do government in general inside the city. You know, do we look at things like you know, going to eight and a city manager? Um, do we look at you know, various different other options? Because many of the municipalities you mentioned also have city manager form of govern government. So I don't want to necessarily, um, I, I like the idea. I just think we warrants a, a larger discussion on how do we do city government going forward? Because um, on the surface, you know, I like the idea. Um, I do have a concern with the committee structure because I'm one of those guys that's on seven different, six or seven different committees um, and it can be onerous and, and a lot of work, yeah. Um, but, you know, if we can figure that out um, and, and make it so it, it runs efficiently but yet still represents our constituents, because I have a, you know, one concern I have is if, if we have a three-person committee, for example, you know, making decision, a three-person finance committee making a decision or a three-person PPS committee or a three-person DPW or public works committee, you know, is that really a, a, a representation? I would argue that three people out of 50,000 is probably not. Five is probably maybe not even. So, you know, if we can work some of those things out, um, either abolish them and go to a committee of the whole structure, it's a great idea, um, or something like that, I'd certainly be in support of it. But I like the concept to begin, out, begin with, at least at this point. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Lewandowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm a sort of against this right now because uh, I've been getting phone calls from uh, people in the city and a lot of times I'm told, well, my uh, alderman doesn't get back to me and right now we have two aldermen that they could talk to that aren't getting back to them in some instances. So I'd like to keep the two because they feel more comfortable with two. Also, I remember last year when Alderman Reinflesch resigned and nobody was uh, picked to fill his position for six months. 
And if this would happen again with only one representative, that could mean that one automatic district would have no representation for half a year. And I also feel that there are too many committees right now and everybody would have to be on twice as many committees. So I'm against this, but I would be in favor of trying to give some cost savings to the taxpayers and have the alderman take the same percentage pay cut that Mayor Van Akron took a couple months ago. Thank you, Alderman Lewandowski. Alderman Versi, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm actually in full agreement with my counterpart here, uh, Alderman Hammond, first time for everything, but uh, <laughs> um, can we get that noted in the press tomorrow? <laughs> Quote that one. Um, I, with major support with this because we do need two words, effective, efficient, are good words to have in government, which we don't have right now. And I do believe bringing it down would make it more universal with things to get done. Uh, I have spoke to a couple department heads on the matter too. And you look at other municipalities that do have lower council members, things are done a little bit faster because there's more either agreement or disagreement, it's done faster, which that makes more efficient government. We do have to look at the committee structure because, and the save, as far as the savings goes, if, if you're increasing, if you're not changing committee structure, which we know you have to do, you're gonna have to increase the pay to go with it. So the savings isn't really, in my mind, isn't there. It's the efficiency of the government and how it works. Um, so I'm in full support of us doing this and furthering discussion if we, can, if we can make 10 work. And actually, in my mind, it would be an odd number, so you don't have to worry about tie-breaking votes. Um, Milwaukee does an odd number. Several other comp counties, municipalities did odd numbers. I would be, you know, it's a kind of a logistic nightmare for Sue, but I'd be more in favor of an odd number, too. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Uh, Alderman Wangaman, you're next. Just, just one small comment yet. In, uh, in this municipality where they send everything to the uh, Committee of the Whole, none of the aldermen represent a specific district. They are all aldermen at large. And so every alderman, if you want to call an alderman, you just call one. You don't have to worry about what district he's from. And this is what they did there in Illinois, and they said it works out very well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wangaman. Alderman Koth, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I will put in my two cents. Uh, I am in favor of this resolution, except half of it. Um, I'm okay with the eight aldermen. I'm going to have a problem with the pay. I mean, this is a full-time job. In the first three years, it, there was a lot of drama and there was a, a lot of hours put in. Um, I was hoping this year was gonna be a little bit easier, but it, it's still a full-time job. So um, you get what you pay for. Uh, the primaries are evident of that. And um, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Koth. Any other discussion? I'll just mention a couple things. Uh, I guess uh, <clears throat> uh, me being a retired person, uh, I put in an awful lot of time. In fact, uh, earlier this year, I had to step back on some of my responsibilities. But I can just imagine what this job must be like. I did. I I wasn't had my business for about the first six months that I was on the council back in 2006, and I didn't know how I, how I uh, ran my business. I came to my committee meetings, and with going down to eight people for people that uh, have a family, children, and all of their events, uh, I just have some concerns that people are going to be really stretched very thin. Uh, and I also would agree with Alderman Koth that uh, uh, if we're going to go down to eight alder persons with more responsibility, then I think the pay has to reflect that. Uh, you know, our new, our new board doc system that we got earlier this year, I really like it from the standpoint that I don't have to come down here and pick up my documents, but from the, from the standpoint, uh, it's, costing, it's costing all of the alder persons more out of our meager salary in uh, paper and ink because what used to be done by the city uh, is now done by the older persons. So uh, I'm more receptive to it than I was uh, a few months ago, but I, I, I would agree with Alderman Hammond. I think it has to be, should have some more study as far as what exactly the committee structure is going to be, what committees we can eliminate. I did have one concern from, from constituents a couple of years ago when we were talking about this, and a couple of constituents called me and said, I hope the committees are still made up, the standing committees uh, are still made up of just alder persons because I don't want public members on those committees. For example, 
if we're down to three aldermen and put a couple public members on there, the reaction of my constituents was is that if I don't like what you're doing, Alderman Bourne or Alderman Heidemann's doing at the next election, we can get rid of you. But you can't get rid of public members. So I think that I think that it has to be some further study done on exactly how many are going to be on the committees, what committees we possibly can, can combine or get rid of. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a, a real quick, more of a logistics question for uh, City Attorney McLean. It's a charter ordinance. Does that have to be um, put out the referendum to change it to charter ordinance? You forgive my ignorance on this one. I just uh, go to the group to clarify that, please. Thank you, uh, Alderman Hammond. No, it would not uh, have to go out to referendum. A charter ordinance allows, before it's uh, effective, 60 days in which uh, citizens can petition for a referendum on the subject matter, but it's not required that there be a referendum. Any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Um, I, I, I'm hearing that there is uh, at least some general sense that we should go forward and look at this in more detail. And uh, my question, uh, Mr. Chairman, would be the best way to do that. I think that um, there have been some questions about numbers, um, compensation, uh, committee structure, just how the, the proposal is implemented. Um, would there be a sort of an ad hoc committee uh, constituted to work on some of these issues? Uh, would that be the best way to proceed? Um, I'm just a question. Uh, Attorney McLean, if that would go, if this would go to a standing committee, would you recommend uh, salary, and, uh, salary and grievance? Uh, we're talking about remuneration. Uh, um, that's, that's up to the council, wherever you'd want to send it. But I, uh, rather than create a new committee, I'd be inclined to suggest that it go to a, an existing committee. You know, I've heard a lot of conversation here about an awful lot of committees already. That maybe make more sense to go to an existing committee, whether it's finance or salary and grievance, uh, wherever, uh, or the uh, strategic fiscal plan. You know, somewhere, but an existing committee is my recommendation. I see Alderman Raisler isn't here today. Maybe we can assign it to his committee. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me once, that's that's happened good, to me once before last reason. week. <laughs> I know that feeling. The vice chair is here. Alderman Hammond. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, you know, given the, the, you know, the, the gravity, or not necessarily the gravity, but that might be the wrong word, but given the, the significance of this, um, I might recommend strategic fiscal planning as the uh, first stopping ground for this particular um, resolution. Would you like to make a motion to that effect? So I move that we refer this document to strategic fiscal planning. Second. Second. We have a motion and a number of seconds to send this to strategic fiscal planning. Under discussion. Uh, we have no discussion. Uh, Alderman Carlson, do you want to call the roll? Uh, we better do a roll call. Ballinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Koff? Aye. Lassard? Leandowski? No. Matichek? No. Van Akron? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Longman? Aye. Nine eyes. Motion carries. Okay, next we have item number nine, which is a uh, motion to convene in a closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851E, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of deliberating the investing of public funds relative to proposals for joint dispatch where bargaining reasons require a closed session. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into closed session. I think we can do, can we do all eyes in that? Or do a roll call. We do, a, we have to do a roll call on that also. Ballinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Adam? Aye. Ka? Aye. Lindowski? Aye. 
Matichek? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Bercy? Aye. Longman? Aye. We're now in closed session. Uh, we will not be going back on television after the closed session is over. Let's reconvene at about 10 after 7 to give the uh, television people a chance to uh, turn off the cameras and microphones.